In this lesson, you will learn how to interpret double bar graphs. And uh, a double bar graph is very similar to just a bar graph that you've seen before, um, but it has two sets of data on it. And so I'll show you what that looks like right here. Um, there we go. So two things that you need to know are a double bar graph displays two sets of data at one time, and you can use the graph to make comparisons between the sets of data. There we go. Um, so let's look at an example to, to compare. So on the left, we've got a single bar graph. We would just call it a bar graph. Um, and then on the right, we have a double bar graph. And so you can see the differences that there's just the one color and um, there's just a graph right there and right there, right there, there's four, four bars. Over here, we've got eight bars. Um, you'll also notice that it's broken down. There's a key right here. There's, we've got boys and girls, boys in pink, girls in blue. Um, and then you'll notice that um, the shoes for boys and the shoes for girls are right beside each other. There's no space in between them. But then in between the other data, like in between socks, sock slippers and other, there is a space between. So that's important when you're drawing double bar graphs. Um, and with reading them. So uh, here's some questions that we're gonna answer. How are the two graphs the same? How are they different? And what can you tell from one graph that you cannot tell from the other graph? So I've answered these already. Um, in the blue, we've got the first, first. Uh, well, actually in the green, we've got the first answer. How are the two graphs the same? So both data show what people wear on their feet at home. Like for example, whose was nine, total people, but then on this side, we divide it up and, and we see that boys is five people and girls is four people that wear shoes. So like it has the same data, but um, this one's divided up. So that's what's different. Um, the one on the left, this graph combines all of the data from boys and girls into one. And the one on the right, this graph divides the data into boys and girls. Um, and then what can you tell from one graph that you can't tell in the other one? Well, this one, I compare information from boys and girls, and this one, I can't. It's just all one person, not one person, one group. <laughs> okay. Um, next up, we've got another example here. So let's say we took the data of boys and girls, and we wanted to separate it, and we make two separate graphs. Well, I can't really easily tell the differences and um, like compare the data. I can tell that the favorite for everybody is grain, then milk, then fruits and vegetables, or then, yeah, vegetables and fruit, then meat, and, and so on. I can tell that, but if I wanted to compare girls compared to boys, it would be a lot easier if I had those bars right next to each other because they're so similar. Um, and so from these, from these graphs, we can tell that more students eat grain products than any other food, and most students eat breakfast, but some do not. Right at the end has uh, no breakfast. Um, now, if we combine those data, so this is the same set of data, but combined into a double bar graph. So we just mush those two graphs together, put the same data that like the grain products beside each other, the milk products beside each other and so on. Now we can easily compare and see who likes what more because there's such slight differences. It was hard to tell, but now it's easy to tell. Um, and so we're just gonna go through some parts of the bar graph that are important. So we've got, first we've got a title here that tells us um, what the graph is about, super important. So this one's about what we eat for breakfast. The horizontal axis, horizontal's this way, um, that shows breakfast foods. So those are our, all our options. And then vertical is up and down. That shows how many students eat each food. Woo, moving our thing around uh, right there. Um, and then our scale for this is one square represents 10 students. So if you look on the side, here's our scale. It always starts with zero right there. It has to. Um, we've got zero, and then in the next square is 10. Then the next is 20. So that means every square means 10 kids. So, um, the, and then the last thing that's special for a double bar graph is that it has to have a legend that tells what the two colors represent. If we just had green and red and we didn't have that boys was green and, and girls was red, how could we tell who meant what? And so let's look at this example. Um, if you'd like to answer the questions and then continue to the watch, to watch the video, you're definitely welcome to do that. Just hit pause now. Uh, but we're gonna go through the questions here. So it says, Kelly is in a combined grade four and five class. She surveyed her classmates about their favorite recess activity. 
Kelly then drew this double bar graph. So here we go, it's beautiful. It has all of those pieces that I said we needed to have. Um, and we've got uh, the three questions here. So it's a, it's a, we've got activities on the bottom, number of students on the side, and we know that grade four is this like peach color and grade five is the purple color. Um, and so the first question is, what is the most popular activity for grade four students and for grade five students? Well, if you look, you can see that the most popular for purple, which is grade five is soccer. And then the most popular for grade four, which is the peach color. Well, we've got dodgeball and also soccer. So there's two options. Um, and so that's what we've got here. So we would write both soccer and dodgeball are most important, or we'd pick both those answers if you have a multiple choice like you do in your um, assignment. The next one, how many students are in each grade? Well, you have to add it up. So you have to add up all of the bars in the peach and then add up all of the bars in the purple. Um, and so when I did that, I got 12 for each. So there's 12 in the purple, 12 in the peach. So 12 in each grade. Um, and then the last one, what else can you tell from the graph? So now you just get to look at it and then find what you can find. And there's a lot of things that you can find. I picked out two things. Um, first thing is dodgeball is not the favorite for any grade five students. Notice there's nothing there. That means that nobody picked it. Um, and the other thing is there are 24 students in the class that I picked out because I added it all together. You can notice other things too, but those are just two things that I noticed. Like you could add up all of the soccers and you could say six plus um, three is nine. So nine students in total like soccer or uh, things like that. But um, yeah, so that's what you're going to be doing. Well, that's the same thing. Uh, that's what you're gonna be doing for this video um, lesson, I guess. And uh, yeah, I, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, make sure you read the questions carefully.